Sometimes someone's humiliating failure is the source of good things. The Great Voyage of SpaceX Dragon's Crew-9 would make headlines all around the world, not just as a story of a ninth crew rotation mission, but as a story of a peaceful collaboration between Americans and Russians to rescue two NASA-stranded astronauts. And there's probably much more to tell about this special mission. That's what one astronaut recently revealed when referring to Dragon's Starliner rescue mission. Find out everything in today's Tech Map episode. But before we begin, let's subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest space news. September 28th was a memorable milestone not only for SpaceX enthusiasts, but for the entire space industry. This day 16 years ago marked the first successful Falcon 1 launch after three failures, which is also the first successful orbital launch of a privately funded and developed, fully liquid-propelled carrier rocket. Thanks to this success, SpaceX has made a breakthrough to save itself from the brink of bankruptcy, paving the way for a new era of commercial spaceflight. Fast forward to 2024, and space exploration has once again reached a new milestone since, under the Crew-9 mission, SpaceX Falcon 9 launched a NASA astronaut and Russian cosmonaut to the ISS from a historic Cape Canaveral pad. It was the first ever astronaut launch from SLC-40, SpaceX's first Florida launch pad, which has seen many uncrewed launches over the years. SpaceX and NASA spent two years upgrading the pad with a new crew launch tower, access arm, and emergency escape slide to prepare it for astronaut flight. Simultaneously, Crew-9 was the 15th crewed launch by SpaceX, including the eight previous ISS crew rotation missions, Demo-2 test flight for NASA, three private astronaut missions to the ISS for Axiom Space, and the Inspiration-4 and Polaris Dawn private missions. Unlike 14 previous missions, the ninth crewed Dragon mission has a very special meaning, which is to rescue two stranded NASA astronauts, Suni Williams and Butch Wilmore, who flew to the station on Boeing's CS T-100 Starliner in June. The mission's Dragon capsule, named Freedom, ferried just two people to the ISS instead of the usual four, leaving two seats for Butch and Suni on the trip back down to Earth in February 2025. Frankly, the two empty seats on Dragon were another reminder of how badly Boeing had botched the commercial crew contract and of SpaceX's stunning victory over a company with more than 100 years of history. Since then, the old space's dominance era has indeed received to make way for the strong rise of the new space with SpaceX as its representative. More broadly, this mission marked peaceful cooperation between the Americans and the Russians to rescue two American astronauts. This happens despite disruptions on the Earth's surface, demonstrating the apolitical nature of space exploration and promising a future of only peace and unity in service of the noble goals of humanity. What an auspicious day, folks. Given such a great day, it would be hard for a retired astronaut who was the first Canadian to perform extravehicular activity in outer space to hide his emotion. On X, Chris Hadfield shared that, very good to see SUNY and Butch's ride home, safely docked to the space station now for the next six months. So much work to do up there. Well done, SpaceX and NASA. His tweet is attached to a 4K video showing Dragon Dock to the ISS. In response, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk wrote, It's real but looks like CGI. Williams and Wilmore should have been on an eight-day trip to the ISS instead of going to last eight months unless there were significant problems with the Boeing craft that delivered them. So far, they have been staying in space for over three months and are counting down the days until next February. That will come at some personal cost. Williams's fall plans have included spending time with her elderly mother, while Wilmore noted that he would miss most of his younger daughter's senior year of high school. Both astronauts are expected to be able to cast ballots from space for the upcoming presidential election in the United States. Despite of difficulties, the stranded astronauts are still stoic. We are pushing the edges of the envelope in everything that we do. And it is not easy, Mission Commander Butch Wilmore said in a space-to-Earth call with the media on September 13th. It's not an easy thing to do, but that's not why we do it. Maybe we do it because it's hard. We're both Navy. We've both been on deployments, Williams, the mission's pilot, said. We're not surprised when deployments get changed, Williams added. Honestly, they'll have plenty to keep them busy on the International Space Station. Wilmore and Williams have integrated as part of the team on board the space station, which means they're performing routine maintenance tasks and conducting 
conducting science experiments daily. Maintenance of the space station is an ongoing operation for astronauts on board, according to Terry Virts, a former NASA astronaut and commander of the space station. The station has all kinds of systems that make it possible for humans to survive in space but need repairs and maintenance. Fans, air conditioners, electronic communications equipment, carbon dioxide removal systems, and the list goes on. In addition, they conduct experiments to find ways to overcome a lack of gravity in water plants. Given the deep experience that each brings to their role, including extensive previous time in space, the ISS's operations will likely be the better for it. Unfortunately, that leads to a large problem for NASA. After throwing multi-billion dollars out the window and steadfast in his stubbornness in maintaining the contract with Boeing, it's still unclear what value the space agency is getting from the Boeing Starliner project. The main goal of having two operational vehicles in parallel has completely failed. Ten years since NASA awarded SpaceX and Boeing for the commercial crew contract, only SpaceX Dragon has been able to regularly ferry astronauts to and from the ISS under contract. Meanwhile, Boeing's Calypso Starliner spacecraft has been in the testing phase. Oh my god, its first test in 2019 without a crew aboard ended up in the wrong orbit and missed the ISS. Its 2022 redo uncovered more problems and a repair bill that was reported to top $1 billion. In total, Starliner's losses have totaled nearly $1.6 billion since the program began, and that doesn't include the cost of fixing problems encountered during this mission. The space failure is just one part of the larger picture of Boeing's downfall in recent years. On the key field of commercial airplanes, Boeing has had several catastrophes, including two Boeing 737 MAX 8 planes that crashed, one in 2018 and another in 2019, killing 346 people. This has cost the company more than $2.5 billion in settlements. And the January 2024 incident witnessed a door plug blow off of a Boeing 737 MAX 9 jet just moments after takeoff, forcing an emergency landing. Subsequently, the FAA grounded all of the MAX 9 planes for nearly three weeks, resulting in a serious loss in the firm's business activities. The company is also mired in a labor negotiation with more than 30,000 workers who walked out last week and is attempting risky cost cuts at the same time. As of early September, Boeing stock reported a reduction of 7% per day, faring worse than its peer Airbus, which was down 4%. The financial downturn has led Boeing to the vital questions. What is the path forward for the Boeing Starliner program? Should they cancel the program? You know, the Calypso's performance in the CFT is too bad that NASA hasn't ruled out the possibility of one more test flight to certify the vehicle. At that point, Boeing could cost about $400 million, based on charges the company booked to redo an earlier test flight. To make matters even more complicated, the ISS will retire in the 2030 and perhaps until Starliner gets a human rating certification, which could take a long time, NASA will struggle to arrange a suitable schedule for Starliner's missions to the ISS alongside Dragon's busy schedule. Despite the uncertain future, NASA has raised a high determination to keep the program, which is proven through Bill Nelson's absolute confidence. 100% sure Starliner would fly astronauts again. Ortberg voiced support for continuing the Starliner program after the craft is sent back from the space station without people on board, according to Nelson. He expressed to me an intention that they will continue to work the problems once Starliner is back safely and that we will have our redundancy and our crewed access to the space station, the NASA administrator said. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.